So we're still only 13 games into the league season and it's a six horse race for the title at the moment. We are still in fifth, but I think we have closed the gap. We've done well. We've beaten some good sides. I think we beat St. Gallen in between episodes. In fact, we can have a look. We beat Lausanne. We drew 0-0 with Basel. We beat St. Gallen. So we've gone undefeated in between episodes. We also beat Bavois. Uh, whoever they are, they are a probably a seventh tier team in Switzerland. We beat Ajax again in the Champions League today. It's going to be Milan and Olympiacos, obviously Lugano, Luzern and Sion as well in between those matches. Champions League, we have qualified. We have actually qualified for the first knockout round. Ajax are not very good. Ajax lost against pretty much everybody. In fact, they have lost against everybody, including Olympiacos. They've drawn once against Olympiacos. We are going through to the first knockout round of the Champions League, and I was not expecting this. Also, we're going to do this at the start of the episode and the end of the episode, and we are now flying. We are absolutely flying at 7.4 for the season. We aren't actually moving anywhere. That's gone the wrong way around. We're not moving anywhere, but we are now closing the gap on Portugal. We've, got a, we've had a better season so far than Portugal. They haven't even wiped out their last season yet, so... We are on the up. I think come the end of next season, once the 5.125 and the 4.750 is gone, that's going to be when things start getting real tough and we need to start making real proper progress in the European competitions, basically like Basel did last year, and maybe we can try and win one instead. Another thing that I've done in between episodes is I've gone through my youth teams and I've kind of put stars next to players who I think might have some potential and players who I don't, basically they're not being first team footballers. So Kaba, I think has got some potential. Joan Khan, I think has got potential. I think some of these do, but there's others that I've got high potential for, not high potential, but you know what I mean? Others that I've got a lot of high hopes for. Some of them just came in like uh, Isabella, who I brought in because he was free. And I went, you know what? Yeah, bring him in. Uh, so we've got a few also in our uh, under-18s, that's what they're called. Dozo, Calvaseri, Benebri, Rodriguez, Lutterbach, Nikolic, all apparently might be pretty good. I've missed this guy, Thibaut Grossen. We should probably do that for you as well, mate. I kind of don't want this guy to get good because I'm not going to be able to say his name, am I? Let's be honest, I'm not going to be able to say his name. So for match number one then, we're at home against AC Milan and we have massive injury problems. Khan is going to be starting today because we are missing Sturgeon, we are missing Rafia as well, we're missing a few other players. Obviously last episode we also played Milan and they kind of embarrassed us, but we did still manage to look half decent, winning or losing, sorry, 4-2, scoring two late goals. Um, basically, I just want to perform better. I just want to perform better this time around. 13th minute, and we've got the ball. It is Toma with it. Facing away from goal, lumps it all the way back to Gavin Bazunu. Now, Joan Khan, picking up lots of Liechtenstein caps. I'm annoyed he's not playing for Fiji. I think I've mentioned this before. It's Petar Pusic across to hand. Brenner's in on goal, and Brenner's effort goes just wide of Mike Mangan's post. Probably not how you say his name either. Well, so far, we have played a lot better in this match than we did in the last time we played Milan. And they're not doing anything. They've had one shot, and it wasn't a very good one, apparently. Half-time, it's nil-nil. Somewhat uneventful, but, I mean, that's I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it being uneventful. Just going to say, keep going, everybody. You can do the business. Um, it, it's not fixed anything, has it? It's not fixed anything. Everyone who was looking nervous and apprehensive is still looking nervous and apprehensive. 54th minute. We've just ticked over into it. Nunes with the big lump upfield. We need to get there first, and we do. It's Aragoni to Pusic. Toma lumps it forward. Brenner's going to get on the end of that. Brenner really should have gone for a first-time shot. It's a good block from Tamori. Keeps it alive. Sene to ha He's missed an open goal. He's missed an open goal. We should be winning. He's rating briefly went up to a 7.0 following that chance. He should have scored. I'd put him down to a 6-5 if I was you. I don't know what it is, but Pusic in, like, I was going to say international, in European competitions, he's rubbish. He's really bad. We're going to do Billing coming on, and we're going to do that? That? What foot are you? You're right foot, so yeah, you should play on the left. So, Sene's going to play on the right, Billing in the middle, Han on the left. That's all we're going to do for the moment. Pusic, I don't think, has had a good match on camera all season, probably. We've got a highlight, but I don't think anything's going to come from it. I think this is just purely because of the substitutions. We are going to keep an eye on it, though, just in case. Khan's going to go for a run. Plays it back to Per Schurz, playing alongside the young Lichtensteiner. Brenner through to Han. Takes a couple of touches. Should be 2-0. And the substitutions happened, which meant we didn't actually get to see the corner. 
final 15 minutes or so of the game and Milan coming forward, although I say coming forward, they're not really. Hernandez with an injury down the line, finds Despotov, controls it well, keeps it in, but passes it straight to Sene. We are looking so much better than the last match. Kepsevich, ball off towards the right, finds Aragoni. Sene's there in the middle. He's going to keep going instead down the right-hand side, four in the box. Sene goes for a long-range effort. What are you doing? That's not what you should be doing, Sene. You should be passing that on the ground to somebody. Right, let's do another change or two. Liam Scales is not having a good game. Muheim's going to come on. I think this might be his Champions League debut. We're also going to do Toma for Caicedo, which is a risk. Caicedo's not happy because obviously he can't play league football, but we probably should play him when we get the chance. We can potentially win the group, right? If we actually win this game. Despotov's going to get on the end of that. That is very good. Controls it well, goes off for a run, plays it into Nunes. In towards Bazunu. Okay, I thought he was going to try and cross that. Instead, he's gone for a shot. Bazunu's hold it, rolls it out to Khan. With his yellow card, our only player currently on the pitch with a yellow card. Muheim's going to go for a run. Never really seen him, have we? We've never seen Muheim on camera. Riddle Baku controls and plays it down the line. Lopez forward. Rafael Liao's in. That's not good. We weren't paying attention. We've just all followed him over like 10-year-olds, haven't we? And Despotov's there at the back post. It's 1-0 to Milan. We've not deserved to lose this. We were the better side. We were the 100% the better side. And they score a goal at the death. That's not, that's not ideal. But we are finishing second in the group. We can't win the group now. I don't think we can win the group now. So we're finishing second in the group. Which is fine. We're through to the Champions League knockouts. Petar Pusic. Petar, Petar, Petar. Um, you are all over the shop, mate, aren't you? Your performances... I say all over the shop. You've played well twice in like the last 10 games. You're getting a, a fine for, for... I mean, I can't give you a poor performance fine. Warn you. Recent form. Point finger. Higher standard. There we go. And I think because we have now guaranteed second place finish in the group, I think we're going to play Lugano and then come back to the other side of the Olympiacos game, talk about coefficients and all that jazz. So yeah, we're going to have a league game instead. Just before we play the Lugano game, we've got some transfer news and Han Kwang Song is going to be leaving the club. £8.75 million signing for Fenerbahce will take place obviously in January. He basically hasn't been playing since we signed Brenner. He has been relegated to basically backup slash attacking midfielder. Still scored 10 goals last season, 16, 17 and 10. So he scores a lot of goals for us. We've got 8.75 million, which I think is a huge amount of money for a player who cost us literally nothing. Now, Petar Pusic is playing once again. And realistically, he's, he's on his last few chances. The only thing that's keeping him in the side and in the squad is the fact that he's actually Swiss. Everything else is saying to me that we shouldn't be playing him. We should be dropping him. We should try and look for a replacement in, uh, in January. But because of registration rules and things like that, we're not going to be able to get one. We are up against our former player in Kai Sipot, who was a very good player for us. We've got a corner. It is Pusic to take it. 10 minutes on the clock. It's found Brenner. It has trickled in. It is 1-0. Pusic is claiming the assist, which means he's going to play well today. That goal as well has moved us all the way up into second place in the table because of the amount of teams that were involved in this title race early on. Requiem's in on goal. Bazunu was already on his knees before Requiem even got into the area. It's 1-1. It's actually Raquel May, isn't it? It's not Requiem, it's Raquel May. 22nd minute. A lot is going on so far in this game. Chipperfield being bullied by Philip Billing there. It is with the Lugano defence though, all the way back to the goalkeeper. Big kick over the halfway line. We need to get there. And Joan Khan is the man to do it. Finds Jankovic. Goes for a run off towards the right-hand side. Needs some support. Keeps going down the right. Back to Persia. Is playing as our right back today. Pusic to Jankovic. Forward to Billing. The shadow striker, Philip Billing, which I'm still not sure whether that's what I should be doing with him. But we don't really have... When we don't have Rafi, we don't have anyone who can play in that position. Scales with it. Off to the left. Find Dominic Schmidt down the line is Senna if we want to use him. He's done a poor pass. It's actually Genepo as well. On the ground to Philip Billing. Takes a touch. It is well saved by the keeper. It should be 2-1. We're going to see the corner from Petar Pusic. Left-footed from the left towards the back post. Jankovic was there. He's not going to bother chasing that one and we're going to win a throw. That we are not going to see. Instead, we get to see a goal kick over the halfway line. Big header from Khan. Finds Pusic again. He's doing all the business, isn't he? A little conversation we had with him earlier, 
seems to have fired him up a little bit. Per Scherz on the right, plays in Petar Pusic. Is he going to shoot? He's not. He's played it all the way back to Scherz, who's crossed it in, and Jenepo is there to make it 2-1, his seventh goal of the season. Per Scherz is a right back as well, getting an assist as well. Once again, back up to second place in the table, but we are the only teams playing today. Everyone else, I think, will be playing tomorrow. It's a corner for Lugano. Stanisic is there. Gavin Bazunu saved nothing so far. And at half-time, it's 2-0. Lugano have had three shots on target and scored twice. I'm not happy with your performance. Gavin, um, you've been poor. He's motivated. Hold on, we've got a fully motivated team. Let's go. Brenner's only calm. Hold on. You've got the ability. There we go. We've done it. It's the best team talk you'll ever see. Free kick in a good position. It is going to be Petar Pusic to take. Left-footed. Is he going to try and shoot or cross? He's gone for a shot. It's a good save. And it is cleared from Chipperfield. Goal kick for Lugano. Big kick as well over the halfway line, but Khan is there for us. Pusic back to the Lichtensteiner. Now scales on the hour mark. Kapsevich to Schmid down the left-hand side. Jenepo needs to run if he wants to get the ball. Doesn't bother, gets the ball anyway. Jenepo to Kapsevich. We need Musa Jenepo to be sticking to the left a little bit more there, I think. Scales is going to go for a run instead. Down the line to Dominic Schmid. Kapsevich again, now billing. Edge of the area, goes for a curling effort and almost puts it in the top corner. But it goes just wide of Jacob or Jakob Rin's post. We're going to drop more points based on a poor goalkeeping performance, aren't we? We're going to do billing. We're going to do Han coming on. Might be the last time we ever see Han on camera. Muheim as well is going to come on for Dominic Schmid. Two of our lesser lesser performers, I think, coming off there. Scales as well struggling. Cap Savage is also struggling. Petar Pusic finds Persia. 74th minute in the penalty area. There's four in the box. Is he going to cross this ball in? Finds it to Pusic instead. Back to Jankovic. Per Scherz once again. The big right back. He's about six foot four, I think. Scherz crosses. Han is there at the back post. He's hit the underside of the bar and doesn't follow it up. He doesn't follow it up. He could have got a goal. Looks like we've got ourselves a corner. We do have a corner. Final 10. Pusic takes it towards the front post. It's managed to fall for Alexandre Jankovic. His first ever goal for the club. 3-2 with 10 minutes to play. We are going to just drop back. To balanced. I think we're just going to drop back to balanced. We're also going to do a sub or two as well. Brenner is coming off for Kaba. We're also taking off, uh, what I forgot, his name, Kapsevich for Brescia Nini. We've got eight minutes to hold on and we've got a highlight straight after the goal. Not ideal. Not I We've not even done the subs. The subs haven't taken place. Brenner is still on the pitch. What is going on? We've nicked it though. Pusic finds Musa Jenepo on that left-hand side. Controls it well. He goes for goal. It's a good save from the keeper. I was worried that they were going to equalise straight away. Instead, we get a corner and the subs have taken place. Pusic is going to be the man to whip in the cross. It's towards Kabra at the back. His first touch could have been a shot. It's fallen for Joan Khan. The big centre-back crosses the ball in. Weird thing to be doing for a centre-back. Jenepo's headed effort is easily held by the keeper. The highlights carried on. And Scales has picked up a yellow card. I'm not sure what that was for. It, they threatened that that might have been a red. That was a weird highlight. It's a goal kick now. Final five minutes plus injury time. We need to win the ball and we do. It's Khan, Jenepo, Bressianini loses out though. Sipot's just dodged a tackle. Adley's in on goal. Goes for a long ranger. Hits it just over the bar. Still 3-2 to Grasshoppers. We can do some more subs, can't we? And I think we're going to go defensive. Final sub then is going to be Musa Jenepo coming off. Hopefully getting a round of applause as well after scoring a goal. We are bringing on Bastian Toma who's going to sit and be that anchor man. Although, do we do that? I don't think it makes a difference. You probably also saw we're now parking the bus. We're going to try and hold on to these three points. And if we can do so, that is going to be a very valuable three points. And we have managed to do that. That was... I mean, we should have won by more. Gavin Bazunu there nearly cost us that game. Well, we've made it six unbeaten, but two of them have been, or three of them have been draws against Young Boys Winterthur and Basel. But we are up to second place in the table. We are now going to go forward to the other side of the Olympiakos game. We're going to see how well we've finished in our Champions League group. We've definitely finished second. We're going to see as well how well other teams from Switzerland have done when we take a look at the coefficients. So let's beat Luzerne and Sion as well, which should. And they're eighth and tenth. We should win both of those. We should win that one as well. Well, I think those three matches went very, very well. Beating Luzerne 3-1, beating Sion 5-1, beating Olympiakos 4-0, Farad Kabat as well, scoring, I think, his first competitive goal. Nope, he scored in the Swiss Cup, didn't he? So we have managed to finish second in our group, as kind of expected. We are on the 13th of December currently. 
we were a fair distance, a fair distance behind Milan because they won six out of six. What does it mean for Switzerland as a nation? That is massive. 11.8. An 11.8 for the season. That is our best season ever. And we've still got a lot more football to go. What does it mean for the coefficients for next year? 46.05, which I think we aren't moving anywhere. We are, what is that, five points behind Portugal. Five points behind Portugal. We are eight points clear of Greece. That's, that's pretty big. That is very, very big. And obviously next season we're losing an even lower score. We're going to have a few tough seasons coming up in the future, though. So, looking around the other clubs in Switzerland, Basel winning their Europa League group. Four wins, one draw, and one defeat to their name. So, more football coming from Basel in Europe. Luzerne, unfortunately, miss out finishing third in their group, but they did pick up a win against Maribor and a draw against Slovan Bratislava. So, they did help the cause. St. Gallen have done well to get out of that group as well. Finishing second, three wins and a draw. Shakhtar, Soligorsk and Kukuriki, they managed to beat and draw with Kukuriki. Obviously, two defeats against Spurs, which is no surprise to anybody. And finally, young boys as well going through their Europa League group stages. So one team from Switzerland has been knocked out. Young boys getting two wins, two draws, two defeats. Who did they beat? Bishakcha here, they drew twice against Sporting and they lost twice against Sparta Prague. Sporting finishing bottom of the group because all they could manage to do was draw with everybody. I bet they're not pleased with that. That means then there are still at least, what is that, eight more matches to be played in Europe by Swiss teams. That's potentially huge coefficient points. If we can do well in those eight games, that's going to be massive. Maybe we might actually move up to seventh place at the end of this season. Next episode, we are going to go forward to somewhere in probably February. Probably there, isn't it? It's probably going to be the first Champions League knockout round game and I suspect we might lose both matches in the next episode, but there we are.